What up guys, it's your boy Kevin Yee the Fun D, aka Kevin the Refugee. And today I will be going over some new investment type of things I've done over the last week. This is a new series, so hopefully you like it. If you like it, leave a comment and let's get started. <laughs> so what up guys um i just wanted to do a new series i was really inspired by this guy i've been following him on lag tv and a bunch of other other um things his podcast but uh his name is jeff uh he does crypto boss um if you check out my web browser hold on that's my YouTube, but uh, he actually has a site called Crypto Boss. He goes over all his like altcoins and stuff like that, and I just thought it would be a really cool idea for me to just like kind of uh, eventually I want to do something like this for my website and whatnot. Break down all the holdings I have and the uh, and the uh, sort of logic that I'm using to actually invest. Um, Keep in mind, I'm very new at this, so I'm learning. So I'm just sharing what I'm learning, and uh, this isn't meant as financial advice, obviously. Disclaimer, I'm not your financial advisor, all that sort of stuff, but whatever. Um, so, uh, yeah, but, um, so, I wanted to talk about two different investments that I have uh, that I just recently bought. One's a stock, and the other one is a cryptocurrency, the Zero X project, or whatever. Um, so I have Andrew in here. Hey, Kevin, how are you doing? I'm doing okay, man. <laughs> I would, I've had better days, honestly. If you haven't watched my streams, um, my dad recently passed away. But try and make this a lot of fun time. So um, yeah, so today I just want to go over so two different investments. Um, and for me, I've been mostly, for most of my life, I've always been investing in majority index funds. It wasn't until later, this, earlier this year, uh, and earlier this year and uh, more recently I've been doing cryptocurrency and more stocks as well so more riskier investments but I highly recommend doing like index funds to just build a really strong base for yourself you know um, and I don't have my fancy setup right now because it's downstairs and I just thought I just want something just really easy just to bang out and just so that you guys can um, so I can do quick content that's entertaining and all that mother bullshit. Hi Phil, hi Jenny. Thank you, Jenny, I saw your comment earlier. Uh, thank you so much for the wish, man, with my dad. Appreciate it. Anyways, uh, I am going to get into my into the holdings. So for y'all that don't know, um, one of the investments I bought was a precarious Biosciences, no lie, when I saw this, I was like, dang, is this the birth control? You know, but uh, it's actually not. I actually bought around 211. So on January 4th, I bought right here. And if you take a look at it, it's already up 29.38%. Um, I personally like doing uh, a lot of drug companies just because uh, once it's patented you get 10 years and it's almost, it's pretty much a monopoly you know and so um, yeah but you might you guys might be asking like why has it just suddenly jumped up and if we take a look um, at their pipeline so the pipeline is basically um, what drugs they have that are trying to get approved by the FDA and as you see uh, vitreos erectile dysfunction now this drug it is a um, topical pretty much a topical Viagra you know uh, that's what it's used for it's used for erectile dysfunction and you can imagine man when you take medications by mouth there can be a lot of side effects it doesn't go straight to the penis it goes everywhere and if you don't if you guys don't remember uh, sildenafil or Viagra was actually founded because they're trying to treat peripheral artery disease and that was just one of the side effects so the smart marketers at Pfizer 
they basically market it as a boner pill and they created this whole di disease state called erectile dysfunction um so that's the whole backing behind it uh right now it's in phase three uh there's rumors that they're talking to the fda and it's most likely going to get approved i wasn't sure if it was actually approved in europe already but um basically it's on the border of getting approved and um you know like when i do like so one of the tools that i use to assess uh to kind of get a gauge of whether something's a good buy or not is yahoo financials so um let's see if i can find it so one of the things i usually look at it's kind of hard for drug companies uh from what my friend was telling me one of the things i usually look at is pe ratio um and PE ratio basically is, if we go on Investopedia, PE ratio. Oh, my computer is so slow. It's basically a price earnings ratio. So um, basically what that means, it can it's a good indicator, like the um, lower it is, I think the more undervalued is, so what a good buy, the higher it is, uh, I can't remember, but I think that's what it means. Anyways, um, I was looking at the PE ratio for this, but it's hard. Uh, it, the PE ratio only matters, like you can only use it when you're comparing it to its peers. So I was trying to look at like the other companies that you compare it to, um, and they're like right up here, if you see that. Um, so it says, and uh people also watch in this corner in the corner over there but since they don't have too many drugs a lot of them have not released earnings so they don't have a pe ratio so i'm like oh fuck what do i do man and so i started looking at um my friend told me to look at the cash uh how much cash so you can look at the um balance sheet and stuff and uh while it's loading, um, let's see. My God. So there's a balance sheet, and you can see how much cash there is. There are some other, like, other numbers that I looked at too when I initially bought. Sorry, it's been like maybe a week since I actually bought. So I'm, I know I'm hella late, but. You know, with everything happening, I wanted to get this done sooner. But you can see how much cash they have just in case. Like, let's say if, you know, the drug doesn't get approved by the FDA, um, you can see if they can ride out that wave. And from what I saw, where was it? I'm trying to look for a thing. Uh... What did my friend say? I forgot. Anyways, uh, you can look at the cash and see if they uh, if they actually can ride out that wave. So that's the first investment. What I what I did initially was actually I bought it two eleven, um, and then I actually bought. I, I didn't go ham on this. I like because I don't have a lot of money to play with right now because uh, I'm technically unemployed. So I bought hundred shares, so about two hundred bucks. Um, and right now I'm up 29.27%. Uh, this is really volatile, by the way. It's like hella risky because, um, you know, if there's only two drugs in the pipeline and, and the other one I believe was like phase two. So, um, you know, it's kind of risky because if it gets denied by the FDA or something like that, then bam, <laughs> you're like totally screwed. And so I, I only did a... I only did a little bit um, just because I wanted to get better at learning how stocks work, you know? So, but I am up quite a bit. Even today, I was up like 12%, which is crazy. Uh, you have to realize it's also a bull market right now. So everything's like fucking crazy in the market. Everything's going to grow. But I did a, <clears throat> a limit order. Um, so what a limit order, I did a limit sell order. So what a limit sell order is, I think I set it at, uh, let me see what the limit sell order, uh, limit, I set the limit sell order at 490. So 
um, when I when I uh, so what that means is when the stock actually hits 490 uh, I will sell half my shares and collect some profit and I'm pl basically playing with house money at that point you know and I think it's a really important thing to always like never invest like never go all in and just like you know collect profits along the way so yeah when I think about Tron uh, I actually don't know that much about Tron there's so many damn cryptocurrencies out there that I just get lost sometimes with uh, business ideas should I go investor straight up with the idea or are there like some kind of setup required for me to go potential investors uh, there's no right or wrong man um, but uh, proof of concept is going to be very important you know is there an existing idea or like existing business model for it but today's stream is about investing so I'll go into more of your question Phil what I can answer but I'm not like a well I'll just tell you what I think and what I know but yeah um so yeah so I'm really banking on this uh vitreous medication so that's the first thing and it's doing very well you know and in the future what I want to do um once I get a little more stable income again is actually probably like do um my like Jeff he does a great series called uh, shit or hit coin and it's just hilarious man he just goes on coin market cap and just buys a random coin and sees the next week if it's good or not and i thought it's a really cool fun series man so yeah um anyways that's enough about a pre not the birth control but topical viagra um the other recent thing i actually uh invested in was zero x and actually it's um I think I'm catching an L on this. Uh, let me see. Let me look on Blockfolio. Yeah, I bought it about... I'm actually losing money on this. I'm like down $136. Uh, but I bought at 189 It's at 164 So not doing too hot. But... Uh, the whole concept of this, uh, so if you want to get into this, if you take a look at um, at uh, the chart, you can see we're in a, it's just dipped right now. And uh, let me, let me, there's a good ch chance to check Bitcoin on coin market cap. Let me see. Probably have porn up and stuff, porn hub. Yeah, even Bitcoin isn't doing too well right now either. So, yeah. Um, with 0x, uh, yeah, it's in a dip right now. But the whole reason why I like this a lot was because if you look into history of... Uh, if you look into history of Bitcoin, or not Bitcoin, uh, but cryptocurrencies, uh, you'll see things like Mt. Gox or the... Uh, Bitrix, I think it was Bitrix, the Bitrix hack where people lost a lot of their cryptocurrency. And so that's why I decided to go with ZRX. Um, I also had somebody like not tip me off, but suggested it to me. And I, I took a quick look at it. Um, I threw, I, I think I threw about like a thousand dollars into it. But um, if you want to buy it, there is. You can buy on Binance, Polinex, Binance. Here's all the places, Bifinex. So there's a lot of different exchanges that you can buy from. But the whole concept is actually um, a decentralized exchange. So what that means, what an exchange is, is just a place where you buy it. You know, when you go, when you want some tacos, you don't go to McDonald's, right? You go to a taco stand or Taco Bell or Chipotle or something. I don't know. But there's certain places where you can exchange uh, money for cryptocurrency, and that's what an exchange is. So what decentralized means is that it's not being held at one place, you know. And so let's say if you know, let's say if uh, I don't know, 
uh, what's that called? What's that? Coinbase got hacked or something like that. That's one location, but when you have decentralized, there's multiple locations. So if uh, it protects you a lot more, you know, it's almost like um, like the same concept of building a portfolio. So if you have like a bunch of stocks and uh, you never you hear that term never throw your eggs in one basket, right? So if one of your stocks like totally tanks and shits the bed, then you're not totally screwed, you know? And that's the same with the exchange. And that's why it's important to have multiple exchanges and never really reveal like where you actually keep your money. And the safest place is always a um, ledger or like a call like um uh like uh what do they call it? Uh, cold or hard wa- uh, cold wallet or something? I forgot, you know. But yeah, like uh, I I recommend probably Nano Ledger, but it's on back order until March. So tough shit if you don't have one. But uh, definitely you want to have a ledger or something to keep all your cryptocurrencies because you never know with these exchanges they can disappear overnight. Like for uh, Kra- Kraken, um, they. I don't want to say it went dark, but they basically disappeared for three days because they're going through upgrades, right? And uh, everybody was scared that they lost, they were going to lose their money. And so, you know, that's why it's important not to just like go balls deep onto one exchange, right? But um, one of the cool things about it is that there's a lot of different coins and stuff being built on this platform. So, you know, um, when. If it blows up, uh, there's going to be a lot of coins like built on this platform, which should be pretty cool. Um, and uh, whenever you're taking a look at cryptocurrencies, you can take a look at the GitHub, um, which I don't know how to look at <laughs> to be honest, because I, I don't I don't do any programming or stuff like that in the white paper. And you gotta always be very careful because anybody could just like. Just because you have a white paper doesn't mean anything. People can fake it and all that sort of stuff too. But um, while that's loading, uh, there's also the you can look at the back the backing behind any cryptocurrency as well. <sighs> yeah, sorry, everything is hella slow right now. But yeah, this is the yeah I. Oh yeah, so I actually have the white paper downloaded and stuff, but you can read more about the white paper. It's about 16 pages and whatnot, and it basically describes like the whole concept and all that sort of stuff, um, like proof of concept, all that sort of stuff. So uh, you can take a look at it at your own time and stuff if you want. But yeah, so those were like some of those are two like short investments that I'm actually involved in. Um, Obviously, I have like a lot more than uh, than these two type of things. But, you know, um, I have a lot more stocks and stuff, but just one step at a time and whatnot. Just show you guys what is up and like sort of the logic that I use to invest. And, uh, you know, I have to say, I'm not a super expert on it, but I just want to take you on my journey of investing into individual stocks and stuff. But um, yeah. Uh, So, is this part of the new Viagra? Like, will porn companies be buying a ton of these? (laughs) I don't know, man. But uh, I don't even know if it's going to really take off since Sildenafil, uh, Ravashio, or whatever, um, is generic and then very cheap people might really like people have been buying that instead of Viagra has been cutting into their profits man I got a fat ass pimple too fuck um, so yeah house money do you think of uh, investing as gambling um, well I think of investing as playing a slot machine but you have like a 70% win ratio. I don't know. That's what it like with index funds. It's your chances are a lot higher. You're not, you know, there's no guarantee that you will come out in the end, but there's certain ways that or certain tactics that you can to mitigate your risk as much as possible, right? 
So that's why you want to look at certain factors like PE ratio, is it undervalued, overvalued cash to see if you can ride out everything. But um, yeah, like, like you have to understand there's no such thing as a risk-free investment. And the other thing about investing is that you are losing by not investing. People don't account for inflation. Uh, it can be anywhere from 3 to 4%. So if you throw it in the bank, you're still losing money. Uh, the rate of inflation is a lot higher than that interest rate on the bank. So uh, that's why, you know, for me, index. If you want a sort of a safe type of investment, go index funds, man. You can't beat like the market. That's the market, man. You're not gonna make a killing on it. But it's really the big winnings behind index funds are always like the the compound interest behind everything. Uh, from an investment perspective, how is the whole EA tobacco? I don't know too much about the EA thing. I actually got a notification about EA, actually. Um, I forgot whether it was a buy alert or sell alert, but I need to take a look at it, and then I can probably better answer that question. Kevin Lee, show us your portfolio. Uh, I would, but I have to uh, kind of hide certain information because I don't want be people to be stealing my shit. And in the future, uh, I plan on having something um, like Crypto Boss, like like this, so you can see like, okay, how much Bitcoin do I have? How much like, what are what are, what is my portfolio, and the different type of stocks that I have as well. You know, I have like. Everything from CBS stock to like Gilead to like I have a lot of different type of stocks and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I plan on to update Refugee Hustle to really focus on health, wealth, and uh, relationships. Those are the three things that I you know that's how you build a rich life, man. You know, everyone wants to have be healthy and see their grandchildren, right? Everyone wants to have money so you don't have to suck dick on the street. <laughs> Um, everyone wants to have really fulfilling relationships. I don't know anyone that wakes up and like is like, I want to be a fucking loser and not talk to anyone. Maybe some introverts, man. Some people like being alone, having that alone time, which is good. You need your alone time sometimes, but I think it's human nature, like to really want some sort of love or some sort of real relationships not that fake ass relationship where you know maybe you go into work and you act all fake and you guys don't you know it's it gets very tiresome man and when you have people that just accept you for you that is one of the richest things and even even right now as i'm unemployed and stuff this is uh that's the thing that keeps me going man um Everyone is eating dirty in alts. Pornhub is the best investing teaching tool. Gain profit penetration is allowed to not be continue being thirsty. What's your biggest earning coin? I think uh, it was definitely Litecoin. Um, when I was doing Litecoin, I sold eight percent of it at like three hundred something, and I made like four hundred percent profit off of it, and it was really crazy. Obviously, like I took a lot of that profit and I invested into other altcoins and stuff like that, but um i'm trying to look at some of the more lucrative like altcoins and stuff um because i would say my portf crypto portfolio is pretty safe for the most part you know it's in pretty much big stuff i don't even invest in ripple honestly uh shit the bet on that one now gox like tron they removed their white paper because they copied did you dip out zcash i did not i know that uh bitcoin private was uh is coming out too and stuff so um no i did not dip out zcash you quit your job as a pharmacist what the hell yeah i'll tell you all about it later <laughs> uh short story is that um my dad actually passed away a few days ago i thought i would have more time with him um and a few other things but that was the main reason uh, I just needed time away for to take care of my dad, but he unfortunately he didn't make out of surgery. So I'm actually uh, unemployed right now, man. Uh, Phil says I'm a bit introverted. I enjoy alone time a lot, but being others was fun. It just takes time for me to wind up or feel comfortable 
I guess. Yeah, man. I mean, like, I think, like, knowing that you have the option that you can see people if you hit them up or anything like that, that's a really comforting feeling, man. And uh, it's important, man. Relationships are probably one of the most important fulfilling things even if you're an introvert or not i mean everyone i think a lot of people still want to find love they still want to have cool ass friends you know they want to have a healthy support system you know so yeah uh your f- friend matt tran is in a scam bit connect ponzi scheme yeah i so with matt's stuff um hold on let me see if i can move up the live chat because it's kind of not showing on the way. Cool. Let me lock that up again. Uh, your friend Matt Tran is in a scam, big connect Ponzi scheme. Yeah, um, for like to each their own. Um, I know a lot of people, they really think connect is very scammy so they take these passive income type of things and actually invest into um into legit coins and stuff like that you know like i love matt man matt is one of my closest friends and uh you know to each his own he wanted to do bitconnect to me i don't i feel like I couldn't do it because I feel like it's exactly what you said a Ponzi scheme and I, I couldn't I can't recommend it you know uh, if my boy Charlie is saying that Charlie is like the man he's the expert I'm not new about this you know so I can't consciously go up to people and I recommend like rather than listen to me probably go on YouTube and type in big connect um, uh like scams and stuff and people can better explain how it works but the general idea is that there's this robot and they basically buy and sell and you can by investing money in bitconnect you can profit off of it so that's the basic concept right uh and i think you get the more people that you enroll um through affiliate marketing the more money you can make and it breaks my heart man i see so many people like I see so many channels like actually advertise um advertise like bitconnect they do face uh not facebook ads well probably will do facebook ads but you know youtube ads you know trying to drive traffic to their site try to use their affiliate link but it's just like i don't know man to me i i i my branding my reputation like i could not recommend something like that you know and teach the oh man like if like i know matt is a good guy you know and you know if you choose to listen to him listen to him man but at the end of the day no one's putting a gun to your head you make the ultimate choice to decide if you want to invest in it or not i'm sorry to hear about your loss that's always got to be tough my condolences yeah man um it is sometimes really tough man like with my dad being gone but uh, it's pretty crazy. I'm actually writing an article right now about my dad's relationship, the future refugee hustle, because I've had a lot of thinking to do what I really want to do with the site, because I feel like the last few articles I've written were kind of off. It didn't really hit. And for me, like when I'm writing, I'm just like, well, you know, what do I want to write about today? You know, for me, it's not really the quick tips and all that sort of stuff. I mean, that's cool and all. But it's so clickbaity. I'm not that type of person, man. And so I really want to create like really real type of stories that I go through, and hopefully it'll help you like motivate you to invest or do whatever. You know, I think that's what I'm really good at, honestly. If like not to like jerk myself off or anything, but I think I'm good at telling Instagram stories and like telling really meaningful stories where people just connect, you know, and finding that common ground. So yeah, um, last year the market was in the same pattern as this year. It will most likely recover at the end of February. In light of the meme, I'm gonna ask how much risk is it to invest in Jake Paul's Team 10? Oh my god, I fucking hate Jake Paul. You know, I've been actually watching a lot of H3, H3 and stuff, and um, I've been like, kind of, uh, I feel so bad for Post Malone, man, and whatnot. Like, 
And it just makes me like, I don't know. I don't want to judge because I don't know these people, right? It could be all a persona, you know? Like, sometimes people just have a persona on YouTube where they want to be hated. They want to have this this uh, image of themselves, right? But I don't know how they actually are. But to me, it's like trash content, man. And it's just like, there's so much negativity. It's not adding to people. It's bothering other people. It's pissing people off, you know? Like... Yes, it gets attention, but when it, where's the limit to this, you know? Like, where, where do you cut things off, you know? And so, you know, when it comes to views, subscribers, all that sort of shit, they're, like, way above me. You know, I, I'm not going to knock their hustle for that, man. But at the same time, like, for me, there's certain... I think it's really important to set boundaries about what you do, what you... You, you know what you're willing to do and stuff and to me I don't want to do that that type of shit man and I think their content's kind of trash <laughs> um we should have bought gas but based off Neo both are skyrocketing and made some decent gains Matt keeps on doing things that loses him followers his views have gone down along with true fans well to be fair too also for my views, they've gone down, but probably because one lack of consistency, but two also, I don't know. They say demonetization doesn't hurt, but there's something that like really fucked my channel over, you know, and that's my fault too. Like, I need to uh, be more active with my email list. I need to tell people hit the bell and shit but you know like there's a million things that you can do with a business you know so i'm trying to get better i might hire a youtube coach once i get back on my feet just so that you know i can really grow my channel and stuff uh, do more outreach to people and do more guests type of things and yeah you know um i like potty face says i like matt and his channel tells how the real world is and you should go f for new and cool careers yeah i like that part of, about matt too and one thing that i really like about matt um engineer truth is that you know he is very ground since he has a strong engineering um background he is very analytical and um i think one thing that he does a lot better than me is actually like really grounding things to the street and that's one thing i want to do a lot better rather than saying something like Oh, the pharmacy market is super saturated, you know? Well, what are the numbers behind this? And is this, and is what people saying actually true? You know, and I actually read Tony Guerra's, um, like, uh, Tony the PharmD or something, uh, his article on, on pharmacy saturation. Great article. Um, I can, I'll probably do another video on it and talk about it, uh, with a live stream or something. Kev, what do you dislike about Matt? He seems a bit arrogant and stubborn. <laughs> he uh, rages a lot. Um, but you know, like, what do I dislike about him? Um, you know, I highly respect him, man. I really can't say there's, like, anything that I dislike, um, like, that I hate about him or anything like that. Uh, I'm not trying to say this to be PC or whatever, but, I mean, Matt is a good friend of mine, too. And we actually hang out, we connect. And so, like, I guess, like, one thing about about Matt is um, I could see why people get kind of polarized. But I guess that's why he's a good YouTuber, too, because he gets angry. He has an opinion. Rather than me, like, I'm kind of, like, people pleaser type of thing, you know? And uh, I'm not always, like, I'm not as opinionated as him. But, you know, like, I think... One thing that I, I, I am is, like, very emotionally connected to people. Like, I understand, like, people's pains and stuff. But I think he does a m much better job at grounding uh, things to the street, baby. <laughs> the Paul content is, like, the lowest dino. Dino miss minster. I, yeah. I don't know what that is. Um, Kev, did the fortune teller say your dad was going to die early? Actually, no, it's fucked up. The fortune teller actually told me that my dad would make it. And, um, man, I should have asked for my money back, man. That was fucked up. But that's why I tell you, like, man, Chinese fortune tellers, they're just for fun, man. And sometimes it just, like, for my mom, it just gives her, um, some peace of mind, man. 
It's tough. Like, I even say it right now, man, it's, does it doesn't have anyone really hit me that my dad is actually gone. You know, I keep on imagining in my head, like, the way my dad sounds and stuff and all this sort of stuff. But he's gone, man, and he's never coming back home. And it sucks. I gave my, my dad's eulogy on Saturday at the funeral, so. Yeah, man, it's really tough. Um, but, man, so it looks like my streaming is, like, really fucked up right now. Um, our boy Matt needs to be dabbed on. <laughs> Dab on the haters. Someone call Jake, Jake Paul. You plan to stay in pharmacy or health, or are you planning to go into a different industry? Um, personally, like, I... So the way that I want to do things, I don't, I want to be involved with pharmacy, but not like directly as a pharmacist, you know, like as an investor or as something else, you know, because for me, you know, I love the patient side. I love the person to person interaction. That's like, it feels so great, you know, but there's also a lot of bullshit you have to put up with. And, um, to, I think honestly, if I were to truly talk about pharmacy, like I'm just very burnt out from it, and I don't think it's healthy for me to stay in it. You know, one of the th one of the reasons why I I think I'm good at pharmacy at least is that um, I'm very personable. You know, I care a lot about my patients. You know, and uh, when we can't deliver or when we can't or when people just take out their emotional bur like baggage on us it's not fair it's not right but it's part of doing business and if you do that long enough and you're like an empath like me or whatever whatever you want to call it right it takes an emotional burden and it sucks ass dude so i just i just don't want to do that sort of retail type of stuff anymore um but you know, like for me, I really want to do Grow Refugee Hustle as a brand and all that sort of stuff too. So that's like my my baby, man. Create like really genuine products, you know. And I think like here's the thing too, like I don't think of, like I'm an investing guru or anything like that. I like as I that's what my blog is actually about. Like uh, today, it was. It's not that I'm like super smart or super successful, like, cause honestly, a lot of other there's a lot of other pharmacists out there who are a lot more successful than me, man. And I'm just like, okay, I'm not expert at pharmacy. Maybe I'm not expert at investing. Maybe I'm not invest like I'm not expert at working out or all these different things. But it's okay, man. Like I can still help people. Um, at least right now, I am. Um, I'm good at a lot of things, you know. Fortunately, I am good at a lot of things. Like I would say, I like I'm an intermediate at a lot of things, but not expert. But one thing that I am really good at is just like being real to people, man, and just talking because I enjoy it too. Like I enjoy really connecting with people, and um, you know, like people always say you have this comforting side to you. Well, what do you expect? You go around strong women, like <laughs> you uh, build up that that um, skill, you know. So, Kev, how much exactly do you have in crypto? I have 12K in from 2K. Oh, dude, that's awesome, man. Um, let's check my block folio right now. So, right now, I'm at, wow, it just jumped up a thousand. Um, so, I'm hovering at about like 15,000 on crypto. So, I'm like relatively new to it, but uh, I'm not taking out for my index funds to invest in crypto either. So um, I have a lot of my things in long-term holdings and stuff. What specifically has people been wanting to be pharmacists? I can't imagine that type of thing for me, I guess. Um, well, it is fun because there's a certain level of problem solving for me that's the fun part too problem solving creating like really like win-win situations that benefit both the patient and the pharmacy you know and um 
it's a lot of problem solving. Like, how do I minimize my costs while delivering excellent customer service, you know, to people? Um, and how do I read this person's need? They're, they might be really pissed off. How do I de-escalate the situation and flip it and make them my best, like, best patient, you know? And it's hard, man. Like, it's a lot of people managing and all that. I would say it's more soft skills for me than the actual clinical skills. But that's that's a fun part. And building a team, like a successful team, is very fun, you know, for me. That managing part is like, dude, that's leadership right there. And uh, I, I always like doing leadership positions, even though I might not be pro at it. But, you know, like, I think it's really important to... Um, throw yourselves in those situations i guess i really like um trying to figure out how to cater to everyone man <clears throat> uh kev can you pay indian programmers one dollar a month to manage your web website you can pay one dollar a month to manage your website that kind of sucks. A whole month's worth equals one dollar. Yeah, I know about the whole like um, virtual assistants and all that sort of stuff. And uh, for me, yes, I could do it, uh, but I prefer to pay for quality. So as soon as I launch my first product, uh, I'll have a lot more money to play with, and uh, I want to see what I really want to do. You know, because I'm not going to be pocketing any of the money. I'm going to be reinvesting most of it. You know, so. Uh, and growing the business, you know? So I, I feel like the concept for Refugee Hustle is very, very strong, but execution is very weak to be completely blunt with you guys. I love the fact that you're not an expert at everything and put out super diverse content. Thanks, Jenny, I appreciate that. So, Jenny, like, here's the thing, like for me, um, I think there's actually a competitive advantage from not being an expert at anything. Um, like, not being perfect is more relatable to the everyday person than being an expert. Like, for, and people are naturally drawn to people that are very similar to them. So it's hard for me to, you know, God bless Elon Musk, he's a fucking genius, right? But it's hard for me to relate to him, you know, like, like his lifestyle and stuff like that, you know, like, it's very hard. Um, but people like Warren Buffett, like, he's a baller, but he lives a very simplistic lifestyle as well, you know, so I'm very naturally drawn to him as well. But for a lot of people, a lot of people can't relate to Warren Buffett at all, you know, so, um... Yeah, man, I th and that's why I think, like, books and, like, so if you haven't realized, I'm really into books, I'm really into a lot of different things, right? But it's because I want to surround myself with innovative, smart people, you know? And um, if you want to be like someone, surround yourself with people like that. And that's why I was saying, like, with my previous pharmacy and whatnot, it's good that, it's good that, you know, I'm gone from there because... It wasn't a very healthy environment. I don't appreciate, like, an environment where, you know, there's so much bureaucracy and they treat all their employees like they're dumbasses. That's not healthy, dude. You know, like, dude, I want to be working on a team, man, you know? And that's why, like, with Refugee Hustle, I want to create a team. And, um, yeah, that's, like, the real goal, man. Like, I have a really big vision for Refugee Hustle, but I know, like, for me, execution is very hard, especially when I'm running all these different projects, you know? But uh, that's why I love, like, doing YouTube, too, because it's very easy. And doing these, like, quick videos, too, like, awesome, man. Like, I can bang out content. And if you guys, for those watching replay and stuff like that, let me know if you like these type of videos. Um, I'll do in Q&A, but, like, if I do, like, one easy topic and stuff and just go over my experience with it, if you like that type of video, you know, and I'll do more and more of them. Kev, if you want quality, I'll pay $3. <laughs> the Chinatown, the Chinatown strategy, bro. 
Uh, you can get programmers with a GPA of 7. <laughs> I dislike how people worship these CEOs. They only know how to make money and are successful. Aside from that, they're literally be just like us. Yeah, that's so true, man. Uh, I think it's important not to idolize experts either, you know? Um, just because, like, for a while, I've been following, like, Tim Ferriss, like, um, Gary V, like, all these, like, top influencers, right? But what I realized, too, and I talk about in my blog, is that, okay, it's important to learn from them, but it's important not to idolize them, because then you don't find your own voice, right? Your own voice or form your own opinion, and you become like everybody else, because everybody's trying to suck their dick, you know? And um, I think that's very important. Like, this is my business. I control what I want done or what goes on in this business, you know? So, uh, yeah, man. Like, I think uh, it's very, like, no one else can tell you what to do with your life or your business. And I think it's important to treat your life like a business as well, you know? But yeah, man, so many people worship these these CEOs. And I was like, actually, there's a video, uh, I think, was it H3H3 or like Joe Rogan or someone, one of these podcast channels, they were talking about Elon Musk and uh, the girl he was dating and how he couldn't really have a genuine relationship. She was like, you know, sometimes I think about, I think about going off to England and never coming back. And then he's like, really? <laughs> and then, like, she's like, of course not. But then there's a really awkward moment because this is like one of those situations where, you know, like, they're somewhat serious, but not, they're, they're like, they say they're not serious, but it's a little bit serious, you know? And uh, it sucks, man. Like, top people, like, they are, everybody is deficient somewhere, you know? And a lot of these people, they're very deficient at their relationships, you know? They don't live a necessarily balanced life, but, you know, but I really think people are created differently for a good reason, and we need diversity as well, you know, because one person can't be good at everything. We only have so many t hours in the day, and, um, you know, like, that's why teams, creating a really strong team that is not, like, so groupthink who try not to suck each other's dick all the time is very important, you know? And I think, like, for me, I don't, I think I'm crazy, but not too crazy, but I'm very respectful to our other people and stuff and their opinions. So I think that's my, like, my thing, you know? Damn, this pimple's, like, fucking bothering me, man. Like, ever since uh, I got back to Boston, I've been breaking out. Fucking, my mom made me this tea for the heat hay or hot air. Um, well, shipping, I will answer that later, but, uh, I can't answer that right now. Uh, like I said on yesterday's stream, I'll go into, I'll go into the everything later, but, um, yeah, I have to stew food right now. Uh, a lot of pharmacy owners are Indian. <laughs> I didn't know that, man. Uh, that's what people do to thank to good old marketing saddens me a bit uh that people are so sheep like in just calling some rich boy a genius if he had no money he'd just be another side fi fan yeah like like i said i mean everybody's human i think you're right about that phil um that people are human at the end of the day you know i see the humanistic side i mean i love what joe and stuff so i know like how he is He's not perfect either, you know, and that's why I'm saying, like, people look up to these YouTube stars and they just, like, think they're gods, but they're really not. And, um, that's one of the problems with the whole, like, low gang and all that shit. It's just, like, these little kids, like, view them as idols. And, you know, like, I'm not going to tell a little kid who to worship, who do you value and stuff like that, but, you know, it goes to show you, like... Like, I, I'm just trying to understand, too, like, why do you, why do you little kids, like, love, like, the Logan family, man? It's just, like, they, 
it's just like so much trash man they don't provide anything positive in life but maybe i don't understand you know and i i try to see the other point of view like maybe they do fun shit maybe like i don't know why prank channels like took off you know what i mean and they're all fake too that's the thing which blows my mind i'm just like dude a lot of these channels are fucking fake you know and they're set up it's not real you know just like wwe and that's why i miss the old youtube man like People used to do skits at home and shit and just like that organic vibe, you know? And that's why like when I do my channel, I just want to have a natural flow of things and not like plan but not plan too much, you know? Because it kind of kills the feel, you know? But yeah. Anyways, guys, uh, I think it is time for me to end the stream. I'm going to try to grab some dinner, but I'm... I'm glad that uh, if you guys like this video, please.